Okay, well, how about now? Can you guys hear me now? Um, give it a few seconds again. Um, okay, all right, there we go. Oh, I think we have sound now. Um, Sorry. Hopefully that'll stay good and won't mess with any of our other things. But since you can hear me, and thankfully there's not that much of a chat delay to, I will get started again from the top. So let's just pretend the last five minutes did not happen. Hello, 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 and welcome to the first episode of Front Wing TV. Uh, good evening, I assume, for most of you, though some of you it might be a little closer to early morning. Uh, thanks to all of you in the European region who stayed up a little bit late to watch us. Uh, to start out, I just want to give a little bit of an overview of what we're going to be doing with this, uh, since it's the first episode and everything. So, ideally, we're going to be doing a monthly stream, usually around the middle of the month, and uh, basically we're going to kind of cover all the new updates that have happened over the previous month, possibly give previews of upcoming releases, um, and since this is the first one, uh, we actually have a lot of stuff to announce and show you. Uh, there's a lot of stuff coming out this month, around the end of the month, and very soon as well. So, for this one, it's just going to be me showing you stuff and talking, but for future episodes, we can... We might, I may have an assistant with me, we may have some special guests in, we might do some kind of special promotions, that sort of thing. But uh, for this one, it's going to be a little bit more straightforward than that. But uh, I hope you will enjoy it. Let me just pull up my little script here. All right, well, that I think pretty much covers the intro. I'm going to try and keep an eye on chat here while I go through it, but I do have a lot to cover, so uh, you can feel free, free to say things to me, but please do not... Yell at me if I do not notice right away. So, the first thing we're going to do here is I'm going to pull up this browser window. And I'll just turn this off temporarily. So, the first thing I want to take a look at is actually something uh, you guys were talking about there while we were having our technical difficulties. Um, so this is something we announced at the end of last month, uh, the Grisaia Complete Box. This is a new product we're putting together to celebrate the Grisaia series getting over 300,000 sales worldwide for all of the entries in the series. And uh, currently this is a Japanese-only item. Um, unfortunately we don't have any plans to make a version with the English translated versions of the games for various reasons, among those being the fact that uh, they're not completely finished yet and uh, the demand, obviously since this is a, such an uh, extravagant and expensive item, the demand probably would not be quite as high from our uh, overseas fans, simply since, uh, because we're such a, it's a slightly more niche audience. But um, we did ask on Twitter, uh, Twitter and I believe Facebook, a couple weeks ago whether some of you would be interested in uh, getting your hands on this just as is with just the Japanese versions and a lot of you seem very excited for that, so uh, we are currently in the process of making that happen. Um, I can't quite say where it's going to be available just yet, but uh, if you've been keeping an eye on our announcements and posts, you can probably guess. Um, but yeah, if an official announcement and probably pre-orders themselves should be up ideally next week, but uh, at worst by the end of the year. Um, but yeah, for, I mean, obviously since this is mostly aimed towards those of you who can, who can speak and understand Japanese, uh, you may have already looked at this and know what's in it, but for those of you who are interested in it, just for the kind of physical presentation of it, I will go down through the contents and give you a rundown of what's contained. So this is just kind of the big banner uh, showing you the new art for the box, and the price in Japan is 20,000 yen, uh, so you can use that to kind of give you an idea. We haven't set a specific price for how much it would be costing for overseas orders yet, but that kind of gives you a baseline to go on. Um, so, uh, the, this, these, this gives you an overview of the... Oh my gosh, get rid of that. Get out of here. Get out of there. I hate computers. Okay, there we go. Uh, this just kind of gives you an overview of the main contents of the set, so mm -hmm. the three main games in the Grisaia trilogy, as well as uh, Chido Chido Michiru over here. And we can go down a little bit further. So here's a just a straight up listing of everything in the set, but we've got kind of images down below, so I'll continue scrolling and go through them one by one. So first up is uh, The Fruit of Grisaia, Grisaia no Kajitsu. Uh, that's the first game in the trilogy, and we've got Grisaia no Meikyu, The Labyrinth of Grisaia, and Grisaia no Rakuen, The Eaten of Grisaia, and those are all uh, DVD-ROM, physical, 18+, plus, you know, the whole 
basically just the original game, just, you know, collected in this new package, and the same goes for Chidu Chidu Michidu here. And then also included are the three Grisaya side, side stories, excuse me, uh, that's the, what was it, the Leisure of Grisaya, the Afterglow of Grisaya, and the Melody of Grisaya. Uh, these are, um, these will be provided as a download code on a download card, because they're, you know, kind of smaller. These were originally released as uh, bonuses for Blu-ray DVD sets, that sort of thing. Alright, and next up we have soundtrack CDs. Uh, a soundtrack CD for each of the Grisaya main series games and Chido Chido Michido. So up till here, these have all been these are all things that have been released before, and they're just being collected here in this new set. But we also have some new items for the set. Uh, we have a brand new Grisaya Remix CD. I'm personally very excited for this. Uh, so it'll be four tracks, uh, remixes of some of the most popular Grisaya tunes. You've got the opening theme from each of the games in the main trilogy, and also the grand ending from. Uh, Please, I only make you from uh, Labyrinth, and those are going to be remixed by members of the uh, Shot Music Collective. And more info on that will be announced as this gets closer to release. And then <clears throat> next up, uh, there is a music DVD. It's a DVD holding music files of all of the Grisaya, uh radio dramas. So these were released as bonuses for each entry in the series, and there's a total of 12 of them, and these have all been collected together on one DVD in MP3 format for you to listen through. And then new, also new to the set is the Grisaya Complete Visual Book. Uh, this is going to be an art book collecting various artwork, uh, images, promotional artwork, that sort of thing from the whole series. Uh, also new is a collection of short stories and light novels. Um, these were also originally released as bonuses for the individual games in the series, but this collects them into one volume, and also there will be a new short story created specially for the set. And then we've got some more physical goodies. We have an acrylic set, uh, sorry, an acrylic stand featuring the artwork you saw at the top of the page, a set of two uh, buttons, can badges as we call them here in Japan, uh, the design for these things aren't quite decided yet, but those will be announced once they are ready. Um, an exclusive premium card for the Chaos Trading Card Game. Uh, admittedly, I don't really know a whole lot about that, but it's sure to be a very nice looking item. And then just, this is just saying, the packaging itself will of course be extravagant to match the contents. So, as I said, we'll be trying to launch the pre-order for that, ideally sometime next week, uh, and we'll announce that as we as it's finalized, and we'll be posting that, of course, on our Twitter and uh, Facebook page as soon as it's ready, and I'm sure our partner who will be selling that through will announce it as well. So that wraps it up for the Grisaya Complete Box, and next, I don't have a whole we don't have a whole lot new to announce about this, but I do want to pull up the Phantom Trigger site here real quick. Um, I'm sure most of you have already taken a look at this if you're a fan of our works. Uh, but we have, there's a preview movie up here, a preview of the story and the characters, and we do have some images here in the gallery that were recently added. Um, we do have some announcements, some new content for this coming very soon, like... Uh, if it's fast, within the next few hours very soon. It didn't quite make it in time for the stream, but uh, if you keep an eye on our Twitter and Facebook, you should be seeing new, uh, very exciting Phantom Trigger content very, very soon. So keep an eye out for that. The one thing I can tell you, uh, announce here, is that when we make the physical copies available, uh, when it gets closer to release next year, this is probably going to be around February or so, uh, one thing that the physical copy of Volume 1 and 2 will include absolutely free is a single CD with the opening and ending for the game uh, in their original forms and karaoke forms, and that'll be a, just a free bonus for anyone who purchases the physical copy, both Japanese copies and the uh, English physical copy, which we will be making available. Uh, details on that are still being decided upon, but we'll have more info on that for you as next year gets closer. And now, continuing with the Grisaya theme, 
this is kind of the main event for today, uh, kind of the big thing I want to show you. So I'm going to, uh, let's see here, change over, well, pull this up. That's not quite what I meant to do, but that's okay. We're still getting used to this whole streaming thing, at least I am, but uh, so I won't, I guess I should just, yeah, I will pop this off and pop this on and pull this up. That should pop up for us, and hopefully you'll get the sound from the game as well. Uh, let me know if you can hear the sound from this. Uh, if you can't, then we'll look into getting that taken care of. Uh, so yeah, I'm going to guess that you cannot hear the sound right now. Well, I guess first I'll introduce you to this. This is the melody of Grisaia. This is the last in the series of three Grisaia side stories. We put the Steam store page for this up month or so ago, um, but this is ready for release, and what I want to do today is just take you through the first uh, five minutes or so. Um, so yeah, I will go over here, and I believe if I unmute this, then you should be getting sound from the game now. You should be hearing the uh, menu background sound. I'll give you a second to catch up. Um, you should be hearing that. And, um, but yeah, I'm just going to take you through, through the first few minutes of the game. Um, I will say, yeah, uh, as Van says here, oh, is it loud? Yeah, it's crazy loud. Okay. All right, I think we're good now. Uh, sorry about that. Anyway, as I was saying, um, get rid of that for you. As I was saying, uh, spoiler-wise, generally we would say that ideally um, you would be uh, you would be playing through this after you had played through uh, Labyrinth of Rosaya, um, just because it, it doesn't spoil anything for that game, and like, neither really spoils anything major for the other. But uh, it just would give you a little better understanding of what's going on in this game if you've played through uh, Labyrinth first. If you haven't played through Grisaia at all, like any of the games, and you would like to, uh, you're planning to do so, I would maybe avoid taking a look at this just because it does uh, explore a little bit of the things that are revealed in the first and second game. Uh, so. Once I get started, if you do want to not be spoiled about the Josiah series in general, you might want to tune out for about five minutes or so. But if you uh, if you have played through at least the Fruit of Josiah, then you would be totally fine. Um, I'm just trying to get the uh, sound stuff worked out here. So we'll see if this is going to work out okay. Um, let's take a look at the chat here. Oh. Our Spanish PR person is in the chat. I'll scroll back up in the chat here, although I guess it's mostly a little white and stuff. Alright, I think we should be good now, so. Sorry, just had to take some of the care. I'm going to get started on this. Um, I'm just going to kind of stop talking and just let the game play through the first five minutes or so. I'll just advance through the text and let you guys check it out. Okay. 
何のことだ。なぜ俺だと分かった。ユージ風見だな。あまりうちの社員をいじめないでやってもらえるか。この激めちゃくちゃでもし俺がサーフの人間じゃなかったらどうするつもりだったんだ生意気なガキでとにかくここで仕事の話はできん黙ってついてこい黙れと言っている所作ユージカザミうんごくらよく来てくれたカザミ私はコーヒーを飲むかね心配ない私の部下に大気や小妻が私のオフィスを引っ越し中でねまずは今回わざわが組織のことだおそらくはろくな説明もないままあたかも
よしいいならばまずは服を着替えろまるでチンピラのような格好だ防弾スーツだお前のためじゃない嫌味を言うな使ったことは銃で遊ぶな早死にサドルタイプのホルスターを用意次にライフルだ護衛任務で使う普段は M24SWS を貴様はナイフ戦を得意としているとのことでナイフも用意ベジタリアンでも抵抗可能な人参型下手のところを掴んで引っ張れナイフと拳銃は常に抵抗しておけナイフ貴様アメリカの宝を侮辱する気か無駄口を叩いている暇があるならさっさと護衛大使相手は相当気難しいお嬢様だそのクソつまらん皮肉と言葉遣いは改めろ
base game is free and contains uh, one character for main dancing, two backup dancers, two songs, and two outfits. Um, and then if you purchase this uh, Timely Paradise Super Live Encore Pack DLC, uh, you will be able to unlock all of the rest of the content. There are a total of nine songs, five characters, and a wide plethora of costumes, which we'll be able to take a look at here. Let's get that off the screen now. Um, <clears throat> so, I'm going to go back to the menu here. Um, so what I want to do here is do a little bit of audience participation. Um, so... I'm just going to have you guys choose how we... We're just going to go to do one uh, song, bring one song up, select all the characters, outfits, and all that, and I'm going to leave that all to you. So, to start, we've got characters here to select. We have... Uh, this is Ayumu. Uh, we have young Ayumu. Uh, and then we have... Oh, gosh. See, this is where I get embarrassed because I don't actually have the names memorized for these other couple characters. Let me just pull something up real quick here to uh, cover my butt. We have other characters in this game, and their names are you. This is you here with the blonde hair. And then we have Haruka with the kind of brown short hair, and Komomo with the short blue hair. So. Uh, oh, we've already got someone asking for the for Komomo here. I'll give you guys about 10 or so seconds of here. Um, so we get a main dancer and two backup dancers to select. So I'll just kind of pick the first three characters that uh, get the biggest response in the chat here. It looks like, oh gosh, everyone is going for Komomo, so it looks like she's going to be our main dancer for sure. And... Oh, we've got someone asking for Megane. Who had the Megane? Oh, okay. So, we'll get the backup dancers in just a moment, but next we got to choose a song. So, for each character, there's a different, there's a slightly different selection of songs. So a couple songs will be available for one character, but not for another. Um, so basically, what this, how this, how the game works is that <clears throat> each, all the songs uh, have vocal tracks for each separate character, so for example, the main theme, uh, Happy Leap, is available for every character, so there's a there are five different versions of that song with vocals from the uh, voice actress for each character. And so, when you choose your main character, whichever songs that character has a vocal track for are available to select. So, I've got two votes for Little Busters already. We did actually already show off Little Busters uh, on a little preview video on YouTube, but if that is what everyone is going for, then I can totally go for that. Oh, oh gosh. Okay, we've got another vote for Little Busters here, so I guess that is what we'll be doing. Um, now, I did see one vote for Megane before for the backup dancer, so I'll go ahead and put her in here, just because I don't want to waste too much of your time. So, one more backup dancer, and we've got Ayumu, Young Ayumu, and you. So, I'll give you guys a few seconds. But if I don't see anything, I'll probably just grab one myself. Um, we've got the Megane, and we got a Yu, so we'll do Yu. We'll leave Ayumu out. She'll kind of feel bad about that. She is kind of the main character of the game, but that's okay. She'll have her time in the spotlight soon. And we can also select costumes for each character here. Um, there is a wide plethora of costumes. I'll kind of go through all of them just for one character. Uh, and then take a look at your votes, and then I'll just select some for the others. So we have the maid outfit, and then there is an alternate maid outfit. Um, and also these costumes also vary between characters, so what a costume looks like for one character might look... It'll be the same style, but it might have a completely different design for another character. So we have a shrine maiden outfit here, very dignified, as well as this yukata is also very dignified. And now we get into some of the little more revealing looter costumes. We have a swimsuit. We have a uh, bikini, which is definitely the most revealing of these costumes. Uh, and then we have <clears throat> pajamas. It's a little bit more casual wear. And then we get into the uniforms from the various games. So there are 
uniform costumes for all of the games represented by the songs that are available. So here we have a Jibril outfit. Uh, we've got a Sora Uta uniform, which is one of, from one of our older games. <clears throat> a Boy Meets Girl uniform. And this is the Little Busters uniform. Uh, we've got Air uniform. A lot of uniforms here. Uh, this Figure Mate outfit. Very cute. Almost looks like it's got uh, Pokeballs here, kind of. Uh, Pokeballs. Got two EF outfits, the Summer outfit and the Winter outfit. And then a couple more here. We have the dance costume from Time Leap Paradise. This is kind of like the traditional. You can see it's... Well, you can't see right now, but it's the one featured in the banner artwork for the game. We've got a school swimsuit. You can see here that it's a little bit soaked, so to speak. Oh gosh, we've got a lot of, a lot of people here. A lot of people going for the bikini, so we might have to do that. Although there is also the apron only. Uh, I can kind of swing her around here so you can see that in all of its glory. So that's also, that's the final costume in the list of costumes here. I'm looking at the chat here. Oh gosh, there's a lot of different choices, but I guess I will go for the bikini for Komomo here. And we can switch. I saw a couple votes for the Tsukumizu here. So I will give that to uh, Haruka. And last, what should we do for last? Should we just go fully lewd and go for the nude apron? And it looks like that is what people are going for, so I will do that. And additionally, there's also customization of head parts. We've got these four. We've got Dog ears, uh, bunny ears, fox ears, and the classic kitty ears. Um, so I'm gonna just go ahead and pick these myself. Let's get kitty ears on Komomo. Uh, let's leave Haruka as she is, and... No, oh, my bad. And you will get the... Let's go doggy. Doggy ears. <clears throat> let's take a drink of water here real quick. Everyone likes the Nako Mimi. And we can also select some effects here, so you can choose one of these for the performance. Um, let's go for the cherry... well, it is winter, so let's go for snow for winter. Um, and it's morning right now, so we'll just leave it at daytime. And I will go ahead and get this started and let you enjoy the performance. The one thing I want to call attention to here, uh, just because I'm kind of proud of it because I'm the one who did it, but... Um, so there will be lyrics across the bottom of the screen, and they'll be in Japanese, Romaji, and also fully translated into English. And the English translation is also, for the most part, about 95% uh, designed so that it can be sung along to the rhythm of the original Japanese. So I just want to call attention to that, because I'm hopefully you'll enjoy it, and hopefully you'll like what we did with that. And I'm going to go ahead and get this started. Hopefully this will load up here. Might be taxing the computer a little bit with all the streaming and uh, everything that's going on. This doesn't kinda... let's see what I can do here. Try to... Uh, I might have to start this over if it's not gonna be friendly here. Well, this is not going as planned, but you can kind of see, you can see what the beginning of the performance looks like. <laughs> Alright, so I'm going to just shut this down for the moment and then bring it back up and try again. Uh, let me just memorize what all our outfits were like here. I think I've got that down. Uh, so let's just try this again. Sorry about that. It is definitely a very uh, graphically intensive game. It is it is just a dance simulator, but uh, with all the effects and everything, uh, it definitely can be taxing if you 
have it if you have a uh, not the highest quality of not the highest performance of PC. Um, this should all be fine. This shouldn't be that taxing, so I'll just leave that as is. And let's try this again. In normal circumstances, the game works perfectly fine, so there's no reason to worry about that. It's just because we are uh, streaming and trying to bring this up at the same time, and it's just on this this computer we're using isn't the most high-end ever, so... But I think if I bring it up again, it should work out pretty well. Uh, we'll do little busters. And we had these two. So we had Kimi for her. And cat ears. Let's see, what was it? She had the school outfit and nothing. And then... We had the apron and dog ears. Um, and I'm going to go ahead and turn the snow off, actually, because that might help with the performance a little bit. So I'm just going to leave it no effect, but this should work. Looks like we're good. Looks like we're good this time. So enjoy. Maybe. <laughs> Come on, dance for us. You know you want to. All right, well, unfortunately, it looks like this may not work out for us after all. Um, so, I give it my best shot. So, I don't want to just leave you guys completely hanging, so unfortunately we couldn't give you that, but I will bring this up for you so you can still get a look at the game. My apologies for that, it's definitely not an issue with the game, it's just that this computer is uh, not quite, I mean, it's, it's mostly, we mostly just use this computer for like meetings and stuff, so I did not anticipate the inability of, let's see here, is this, alright, so I'll pull this up for you guys. Sorry about the issues. So hopefully that's up on the stream for you. You guys got nothing there? Well, that's no good. Alright, well, we'll just do it. Let me just start this over for you then. Very sorry for the uh, issues here. We're doing our best. I'm doing my best, at least. Alright, well, I'll just play this video for you. And you can enjoy that. And once this is over, we can move on and pretend this didn't happen and talk about some other stuff.
All right, I hope you enjoyed that demonstration of Time Leap Paradise Super Live. Um, I'm glad that we got to have all that per uh, audience participation and have you guys all, uh, you know, choose the outfits and costumes and everything. And as I said, this launches on Steam tomorrow, so if you liked what you saw of the game, you can pick it up then. And I hope you enjoyed it. All right, so we do have a couple more things to cover here. We're entering the kind of tail end of the stream, but... Oh, sorry about that. I do hope there was sound during that. I didn't see anyone saying anything bad, so it was probably fine, but... I'm going to bring up a different thing now. Uh, let's see here, turn this off. All right. So, a couple other, couple other things to take a look at here. Uh, this is one of the big things we want to emphasize right now. We have the Shari no Kuni Kickstarter. Uh, and some of you may have watched our Kickstarter live for this a, about a week and a half ago or so. And you may have first seen me there, but uh, that kind of inspired us to start doing a monthly stream of our own to give you guys announcements and updates and stuff. Was there really... Oh gosh, well... The videos are on the page for Timely Paradise Super Live, and you can go watch them themselves. Uh, and next time, we will be 100 times more prepared, and everything will go all right. Anyway, moving on. Uh, so yes, the Sharon Lacuna Kickstarter. We hit our goal about a week and a half ago, and currently we're sitting at just shy of $90,000 here. Just over a 1,000 backers, and um, I'm sure most of you probably are already... Uh, quite well aware of the campaign itself, but we do want to call attention to a few things here. Uh, you can see here this uh, special new illustration from Alpha for reaching the goal to celebrate that, um, and this is actually, this illustration is available in the $1,000 reward tier as a special limited to 10 uh, canvas art print autographed by Alpha, and there are only, I believe, three slots for that left, so if you want to get that... Uh, ah, those are all gone, yes. So yes, if we look up here... Yes, yeah, so there are only three slots left for that $1,000 reward, so if you want to get your hands on that, you need to get in there quick. Um, but yeah, basically the main thing we want to call attention to are our stretch goals right now, because that's what we're really pushing for. Um, and at $120,000, we'll be able to make a Vita port of the game, uh, and it'll be available both physically and digitally. And if you back the campaign now, uh, all you have to do is back the campaign now, and if the stretch goal is hit, then you'll be able to switch from PC to Vita for your pledge. It's very simple, very straightforward. There's a... Uh, a little more information, uh, there's kind of an FAQ about the Vita port in one of our updates, which you can find just by visiting the campaign page and clicking this link. Um, but there's some very simple instructions on how to do that. And then once, after we've hit the Vita goal, uh, with just a little bit more money at $145,000, we can get the bonus fan disc chapters. Uh, we have a, moment re a Moment's Rest and the Heroine epilogues from the Shari Nukuni fan disc and those can be translated and included free as part of the game for everyone. And like so like I said, we're just shy of $90,000, about a week left to go. So there is still a little bit of a ways to go for those stretch goals, but we think that if we rally some support and really push it, especially with the kind of uh, big jump that Kickstarters usually get in the last few days, we think that we can definitely make it there. Um, and we do have a few more things to announce in the upcoming, in the last week of the campaign. Um, we have one new reward to add. Um, we're not sure 100% if we'll be making a new tier for it or if it'll just be an add-on only, but it'll be a t-shirt that, with a new design, a little bit more affordable t-shirt compared to the uh, full graphic t-shirt. And we should have details on that. Ideally, before the end of the week, we should be getting that information out to you. So if that interests you, you can grab that. Um, we haven't quite announced it yet, and we'll be posting more details on what it'll be like and what we'll be doing with it later, but uh, we will be doing another Kickstarter Live broadcast for the uh, last <clears throat> hour or so of the campaign, just to kind of give a countdown and celebrate with everyone, and hopefully push to reach those stretch goals before it ends. And then lastly, we have a Thunderclap uh, campaign going on, so if you 
just come in and find this update. You can get the link to the Thunderclap. And what Thunderclap is, is basically you sign up with your social media account, and at a set time, it will automatically post a tweet for you. Uh, this is the tweet we have set up, so three days before the end of the campaign, everyone who's signed up will have this tweet go out and just kind of, you know, give the campaign one more big push to try and reach those people who may not have heard about it yet. And so right now we're just shy of 200,000 people, so if we can get a few more people in here and increase that reach as much as possible, it'll definitely be very helpful in getting those stretch goals met. So if you have pledged to the campaign, we thank you very much. And if you haven't yet, by all means, give it a look and see if it interests you. Um, and so... Also in the realm of uh, crowdfunding, I'm going <clears> to <throat> trans. Uh, what's the word I'm looking for? I'm going to well transition over here. Um, so next week we're planning to launch this. Next week will be the uh, Indiegogo campaign. The in, basically Indiegogo pre-orders for uh, Corona Blossom Volume Three, and so this will have you know the usual, basically just like last time. It's going to be essentially a way to pre-order the physical version of the game or also just get the Steam version and the 18 plus patch at a little bit of a discount. Um, and we'll also of course have some more expensive, more uh, physical rewards, uh, tapestries and stuff like that. So that'll be launching next week. We're aiming for the 20th. Um, don't have that completely locked in stone yet because we're still finalizing a few details, but I can show you for the first time today. Uh, we can take a look at the rough drafts for, this is the rough draft for the art book cover. Uh, we've got, looks like Kumiko and Kanade there uh, on the art book cover. So that kind of rounds out the characters. For the first one we had Arne and Shino, and for the second one we had Lily and Yuni. And so now we've got Kumiko and Kanade there to round out the characters for the art book covers. And we've got a couple tapestries for you as well. Uh, one tapestry will feature Kanade here uh, in some kind of uh, sexy lingerie. And then we have one of Kumiko uh, having some fun there. And obviously these are just rough drafts. Um, the final versions are currently still being finalized, illustrated, but Ideally, we'll have the, we'd like to have those finished in time for the campaign to launch, but uh, if not by launch, they will absolutely be available before the campaign ends for you to see the uh, full finalized illustrations. And aside from that, there will also be the Shikishi available. We'll have a new promotion kit available. And also, this is not 100% set in stone yet, but we are fairly confident that we'll be offering a... Uh, box, a special box to package the entire trilogy of the physical DVD ROMs in, and so we'll be aiming to make a slipcase box for that, and it'll be, the idea we have is to basically make a tier that includes the Volume 3 physical in the box, for those of you who have, who have contributed, contributed to the first two campaigns, and also we'll make a special tier that has the box set with all, all, all three volumes of the physical DVD-ROM included for those of you who have been holding off for the series to be complete and want to get it all at once, we'll have that available as well. So that wraps it up for the Corona Blossom 3 campaign details, but we'll have more announcements about that as it moves closer. Um, and next week, that'll definitely, at some point next week, the, 20, the date of the 20th is not 100% finalized, but sometime around then. Um, so, now we're just going to move on to a few little uh, closing statements. Um, so at the end of the month, at the end of this month, we do have comic -Ed coming up, uh, Comic Market, on the 29th, 30th, and 31st. That's here in Tokyo. Um, and we'll, we'll be having a booth there, and we'll be having a wide variety of new merchandise available. And up on screen right now is one of the new items we'll have available. It's a b 2 size tapestry of the... Uh, Phantom Trigger, Grisaia Phantom Trigger key art. Uh, that's one of the new items we'll have available, and this is actually also available for, for early purchase right now at the uh, Front Wing pop-up shop we have set up at uh, G-Store here in Akihabara. So if you're in the area right now and you want to get your hands on this, you can head on over to the Akihabara <clears throat> Front Wing pop-up shop that's on the fourth floor of the G-Store. You can uh, 
find more detailed information about that by heading over to our Twitter. We tweeted about that a few days ago. Um, but yeah, aside from this, we'll also have a lot more new merchandise available at Comiket, so we'll be announcing that as it gets finalized, probably next week, hopefully, but definitely, obviously, before Comiket, we'll have that information available for you, and if you're coming out for that, uh, we'd love to see you at the booth. I'll be there, and a few of our other overseas staff will be, uh, other translation staff and the like will be <clears throat> available to help out if you need any help with, uh, you know, Japanese or whatever. Uh, so we look forward to seeing you there if you're in the area. And let's see here, I guess I'll just transition back to myself right now. Um, where are we here? Alright, so that about wraps it up for this episode. Looks like we hit, well, just about an hour. Uh, I was expecting to be about 45 minutes, but we hit a few snags here and there. Um, but obviously it's our first time going through. There's bound to be a few snags here and there, but we will be... Uh, you know, taking a look at those things, making sure that next time we can have everything go perfectly smoothly. Uh, thanks to everyone for tuning in. Let me see if I can take a look here real quick. I'm not sure how many people we've got watching on Twitch and YouTube, but uh, thank you very much to everyone who's watching and for everyone who participated in the chat. Um, sorry I wasn't able to look at chat as much as I wanted to, uh, just because I'm just one guy and I'm having to talk the whole time as well, but... Uh, Maybe next time I can have kind of an assistant with me to take a look at the chat and pass on important messages to me. Uh, but yeah, we'll work all that work all that stuff out. And uh, next month, um, we'll, we definitely like to do one next month. Um, I'm not sure when exactly that will be. It might be closer to the end of the month because uh, we might not have announcements ready just because the end of the year is kind of very hectic and I'm going to be... <clears throat> out myself until like the 11th so it might be closer to the end of the month when we have more things to announce but uh we will be back again sooner or later for another episode of Frontman tv i hope you enjoyed it and as always keep an eye on our twitter and facebook for all the latest announcements um we'll have the next thing coming up is some phantom trigger some big phantom trigger announcements so you'll definitely want to be uh following or liking us on social media too get the latest information on that. So, thank you very much for tuning in, and I'm going to go ahead and sign off, but I will see you guys again soon. Thanks. Yeah, <laughs> yeah, <laughs> タイムリープ見せられなかったのはちょっと残念だったけど。<笑><笑><笑><笑><笑><笑><笑><笑><笑><笑>